Hello all and uh, welcome to episode 13 of Enterprise Tech India Unplugged and uh, we really value your listenership and subscription. Please continue to subscribe to our YouTube channel, to our automatic uh, podcast. Uh, although we are primarily an audio audio podcast, if you like to see our faces, you can always look at our faces on the YouTube channel although it is only 15 frames a second because we are not doing high performance action. So uh, we have with us uh, Kumaran, who is the chief mentor of Tiny Magic, and uh, he runs a very good series on Saturday architecture. And uh, his he gives great advice on architecture, on software, and uh, life in general of architects. Uh, welcome, Kumaran. Thanks, Deepak. Thanks for having me. So to, today, what we want to talk about is all these new opportunities, we, which we have been talking about for a few few weeks now, uh, related to all this lockdown and coronavirus uh, coming in, and how the worldwide market for for IT services is changing, and uh, the the discussion today is changing from from uh, just doing pure outsourcing of IT to can you help me make things my supply chain agile or help me decentralize or make me resilient and one in, one interesting factor which is come is can you help me reduce the total cost of ownership right so this this is something these are things which can actually help the it industry move in in, in india specifically to move up the value chain right so so this is so what can, can you help me understand this how can we really target this total cost of ownership. Uh, what should we really consider if, if, if an IT uh, enterprise IT was looking at reducing total cost of ownership? What, what, are, the, what are the methods by which we can approach it? Um, actually, I think it's kind of ironic. Okay. Hmm. Um, or uh, this should have been always the motivation for industries or businesses or people right how do i get optimal output out of what i'm doing even though it was said right i think when you have a lot of resources okay we tend to be uh, not that detailed or specific enough or rigor enough to ask what the requirements are when you have it's like we walk into a restaurant okay you have a lot of money They'll say, whoever wants, order whatever you want. Okay. But now, the thing is, and of that, a lot of food gets wasted. Right. Okay. But let's say you had less money in your pocket. You kind of ask a question, do you really need it? Are you, how hungry are you? Will you finish it? Questions like that come up. Otherwise, you say, you know what, I want everybody to happy order, let them what they want to. Now, my question would be is basically from get-go itself, we should have the responsibility that I would not waste food. I would ask a question, is it really needed? So there is this joke that goes around like middle class families uh, will never order uh, ice cream because uh, anyway on the home way back you can buy for the same cost, you can buy a liter of ice cream than one scoop that you would get in a restaurant. I'm sure as we would have yes. heard it from our parents yes. and we have told that also, right? And I think that's prudence. It's not being stupid yes. or silly or being this thing, right? And even in the IT world, right, we should be able to do that. And okay, so let's say that I'm okay with my kid asking a scoop. I should be very clear in mind, this is a waste of money. With awareness, you make that choice. No problem. But let it not be an unaware thing. I'm using this metaphor of restaurant ordering a vanilla ice cream, whereas you can buy a litter on the way home from a neighborhood grocery shop right and go home and have four times that scoop the entire family can eat this ice cream for the same cost of one scoop okay right so what's the analogy right so basically if you ask me should we think whether that ice cream is valuable or not is it really worth it i think it's always asked it need not be a question asked when i have less money in my pocket it can be even when i have a million dollars in my pocket the same question should be asked it's a wise thing to do it's a question okay. of wisdom. Okay. Now, fortunately or unfortunately, we are forced to become wise because of the constraint around us. 
so i think it's good it's giving us an opportunity to be wise so coming to the it thing right the spend that we are doing what are we spending on and i think it comes to the favorite topic about aligning technology to business and strategy kind of a thing right how is it actually aligning it what we want so it's kind of falls into that same space now let me split that into two different type of it industries one is a captive like let's take uh, maruti or uh, tata they have their own it department that is one type of an it and then you have the classic uh, it product makers who are there who are telling some products and services the market is of course very small in india and then you have the large it services company offering services to all of them okay now if we just take in all but one thing is all how the tco reduction has to be looked at will be very different from all the three mm-hmm. the first segment will think how can i reduce the total cost of operations of the entire business how can i make that indica car at 10% lesser cost is how that it department will think of okay mm-hmm. now ideally an it services company rendering services to tata should also think like that but in addition to that they also have to have another thought if i have to deliver 10 lines of code and it is costing me 5 dollars today how can i deliver the same 10 lines of code with 4 dollars okay okay so that is so they have two levels of things there and the ones who are trying to make products they should kind of think that if i'm selling my product at let's say 50 dollars how can i sell the same product at 40 dollars or for 50 dollars how can i add more value so essentially the cost of spend should be the same but the value should go higher okay, okay. so that should be the goal okay. okay in fact to the extent or possibility so if the output is going to remain same then my cost should come down how can i do it so okay. that's the key question to start off with and that sets us on the path yeah. so so is it really possible for it companies to actually uh, reduce the cost which uh, we are asking them to 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 even do that the the because their their input has not changed right their uh, the cost of producing that uh, uh, service or product has not changed for them right is it really possible for uh, a company like that to reduce the total cost of ownership for any given thing what would it really take for them to do it because besides reducing margin they cannot reduce the cost to the consumer you are absolutely right? right if you do it the same way how you have done it for the past 15 years there is no right. way you will achieve this so we have to think differently and we have to do differently so the mindset has to change and the method has to change both has to change i give a very specific example as a part of what we do in tiny magic we deliver workshops okay so there is a two day workshop which we had to do and we needed people to interact with each other okay right. so we go there they do workshops with each of them now that typically the two day workshop if you look at it i have locked up uh, a bunch of 15 20 people in a room for two full days and uh, 30% of them typically travel to come to that location i travel and we have a sometimes we have a conference room in a resta in a good hotel that is booked and meals and put together so if you look at it the cost of conducting that workshop will be anything between 4 to 5 lakhs right. net net all included okay right. so 5 lakhs is close to what 8000 dollars 6 5000 dollars okay so roughly it's around 5000 dollars now because of this corona interestingly what has happened is i had to switch now i am doing that 16 hour session as first i did a 4 hour session and the rest i will do it over a period of the next 7 weeks with 2 hours each okay 
now i have changed my method okay and it's hard for me to so previously it was like all the people walk in i give them all that thing i'm all set they are all set i have one clear flow everything is controlled okay mm-hmm. and i know the con- connection from one session to another session to another session people remember it it's easy they are in a mindset to learn yes it happened okay now i have to deal with a completely different thing because the next week when they come in i don't know how much they will remember okay and it is kind of i there is an exercise which i can't leave halfway and pick it up after one week because look at it this way in the previous thing their mindset their mind space was ready now this call is from 11 to 1 they were working on the project till 10:55 right then they log on to their call their mind is not here and i'm going to finish the call at 1 by 1:30 they are thinking are i have to finish my lunch and then i have to start my work and i have to prepare so basically i've lost their mind space also so i have to factor in that inside my method okay. that neither i am ready nor they are ready so i have to tweak my content to meet that okay and i have started using the technology space now how do i do when you do a group call right how do i make each team work individually so i had to take the help of new technology so zoom has a feature called breakouts which is kind of mm-hmm. easy you can form them into groups and then make them and bring them back okay yes. so i can actually so once i give an exercise i start a breakout they all go into their own rooms and come back now i have to tweak to this so i've changed the method figured out a new technology now interestingly i subscribe for zoom professional edition which is around 150 dollars right okay now look at it 5 lakhs right mm-hmm. now it's not just 5 lakhs is direct cost what happened to the 25 member team losing 16 hours of productivity yeah that there's a huge cost by itself that's a huge cost by itself right and they had to do so much of rearrangement of things like that in a conventional world now they are not doing any of that the two hours that they spend in here probably they will squeeze in another hour to get work done on that day so practically they don't miss productivity on that day in fact this one becomes like a good break from them from their monotony so in inst- they cut down on their coffee breaks things like that and kind of allocate this they feel good about it and then they go on so essentially that's why a 16 hour program now will probably become 24 hours or 32 hours the content part delivering i'm talking about so i have to account for i need to think differently the participants needs to think differently they now the thing is also the challenge is they don't know where this health thing is headed right week after week something is happening what is the, in the previous case they had to be patient for two days and they will get right. the full picture now only after that 8 to 10 weeks will they get the full picture now how do i keep that interest now i have to figure something out i still haven't got the answer to it but i know that this is a challenge that i have to handle so, so it's a calm is, yeah so this is increasing increasing your creativity to answer those questions correct and now what has happened is the beauty part of this right now i'll figure the solution out i'm committed to figuring it out probably i have to do two three batches like this to figure out but at the end of it what have i done previously i used to say you have to get all the guys into one room you need two days and you have to spend that 10000 dollars just to get the program kick started now i can walk into a business and then say give me four hours of them to begin with we will do it i'll get it done so i think that's actually transformational probably i should have thought of like this from day one itself the moment yeah, i have lost opportunities because when they think that they have to get two people i mean two of them senior folks two full days that itself becomes a road blocker to my engagement so i i think i think everything has its own time scale of realization right because it's it's not that these technologies did not exist at that point of time correct it's just that culturally we were not tuned to learning outside the classroom in small chunks over an extended period of time right it's the constraint which is this situation has put on us which has actually 
at least opened the mind of the people who are who are involved in the decision making say okay we there is no way we can get out of this situation and we still have to move forward let us go it go ahead and at least try this even if they are skeptical they are okay to try it and, and, and a good example i believe is is tcs uh, uh, which actually they said they have moved really 85% of their uh, staff to this secure work from home model right and they are so and, and it's not that they just created it overnight right they have been working on this this uh, project of working remotely for a longer duration it's just that whatever happened now has hastened that that whole uh, uh activity of uh, of transforming them to work from home oh i didn't Now, know that yeah. they were working yeah. on that for quite some time is it they yeah so they had they had some they had some internal project going on for for a significant period of time and, mm. and that's how they successfully moved 85% of their staff to the secure model uh so so actually there is there is an interesting angle to to some of the way these these it companies have have implemented those things they have they have what they call as employee productivity trackers right this, like webcam based movement capture hourly time sheet entry tracking of keyboards and ensuring that uh, employees are working at home right so there is still that that level of we don't trust you to work from home what what is your opinion about that you touched on a very key point that's where the mindset comes in right um it's and practically from my experience i have seen the more i trust somebody the more trustable they become by and large okay, okay. the more i trust my team members the customers the vendors the better they take care of me yes but i would say if you look at successes and failures where i have trusted and failed is significantly lesser i've had more successes than failures and interestingly that person whether it's a customer or a developer their behavior with me is very different from how it is with another person and i think it comes back to when i trust them somehow the human brain measures up to that level so if you set a bar of trust at this level the person kind of unconsciously tries to reach that level you set the trust bar low then they stick there you increase it higher it increases so i think trust is a very important uh, aspect that we need to develop and ironically philosophical statement right as civilization if we say we have become more civilized we should be able to trust people more ironically i'm not sure we have made great progress in that area of humanity yeah. <laughs> trusting fellow human beings <laughs> so i i was reading this article on, on zdnet.com and they have this uh, <clears throat> india specific content all all this time and uh, 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 what what they're talking about is uh, uh, what they call as uh, uh, this deep rooted malaise in indian it enabled services industry where the senior management generally mistrusts people wow right wow. so 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 this and uh, this is a very sweeping statement to make right uh and it probably has not just a grain of truth but probably it is the truth for large number of uh, companies and uh, and there is obviously uh, a background to some of those things but what do you think is a root cause of that malaise if that if that exists oh it goes i obviously i haven't done any studies it's just my opinion i think it goes back to our schooling or whatever you said right mm -hmm. um work will happen only under somebody is watching okay so you studied in school you went to tuition like that it is never like you work by yourself there were no i mean nowadays yes but then it's not a project based learning it's not an activity based learning so somebody is watching over your shoulder measuring everything so basically whatever we did as a society we did it because somebody is seeing us mm -hmm. and now it becomes so we do not know how to do things when somebody is not seeing us now i see i hear stories people working remote are getting stressed out mm -hmm. because that they are working so much more now it's kind of interesting 
why are they working so much more because they don't know when to start and when to end they don't have a self discipline either yeah. you work less or you overwork you mm. don't know how to do the right amount of work by yourself that 8 hour see previously we are kind of used to it when i do a swipe in at 8:30 in the morning my working starts when i do yes. a swipe out i stop working so i am controlled by my swipe in swipe out i don't have any control over when i'm working or not mm-hmm. so this is this is a new cultural change which they have to adopt mindset right so i have to decide when i will start working i have to budget my time and i have to work according to that and because i don't have this the management doesn't trust me okay and anyway i am kind of happy right they anyway they are tracking so what do i have to <laughs> if i have swiped in that means i am working that's all okay so it's a it's it it's a correlated problem it's not a cause and effect is what i'm trying to say so it both two things have to move and probably it's the senior folks who have to or the management which has to take the first step by telling you know what i will trust you and there it comes to the point that it leads to the next question that the ability to clearly allocate work or what needs to be done we have to get better at it today on a ad hoc basis work is thrown at people mm-hmm. okay so you have some like even if you take development you have one use case story mm-hmm. okay but exactly what each person in the team right maybe they'll have something for the developer okay but what is the deliverable of a project manager at the end of a week what is the deliverable for an architect on a weekly basis what is the deliverable for a program manager on a weekly basis nobody knows <laughs> at best you can tell it at a developer level he has to finish this feature here but that too it will be like two weeks kind of a thing which is at least okay, okay. but anything above that a team lead level if you say what is your deliverable in the next two weeks most of them will struggle to answer that question and i think if we get mature at that level and this problem gets even bigger as you go every level team lead little visibility project module lead lesser project manager even lesser program manager even more lesser by that time i've just lead the account head or the gm level right we have no clue what they are going to do <laughs> and an interesting interesting angle which which uh, which also exists within the indian it industry is how the indian it industry uh, where mnc have cap mncs have captive units in india or or they just have branches let's not call them captive units because that sounds sort of in some way derogatory right so so they they have branches in india and they have offices in india the same employees when they shift from an quote unquote indian it company to this mnc their behavior becomes completely different now they are trustworthy now they are able to do everything now now nobody is watching over their shoulder and they still still are doing whatever they were supposed to do how does that happen i think it goes back to the first point right so when you set the trust bar as high the system kind of reaches that level over a period of time and they also have kind of systems in place so if you look at for example in uh, If you look at Microsoft, right? We we don't have we didn't have a swipe in swipe out. Right, right, correct. But then people did what they had to do. Yes. Otherwise, the company is not going to be in the place today. Right, right. Okay. So there is. Um, so I think it is. It's up to the senior management folks, the leaders, to take the first step to say, "I will trust you that you will not waste your time." and then move from there so i i think this is this is the most important thing which the indian it uh, industry which is working in india and the whole uh, i would say not just it industry but the predominantly pretty predomin- much all pre- predominantly all we have to breed in this culture of trust and uh, but maybe initially we have to do the trust but verify approach 
uh, where we do trust, but we have to verify once in a while that this is once actually happening. A, see, I think along with trust, right, we also have mm -hmm. to be vulnerable to things going wrong. So it's not that you switch on trust, day two people will be transformed. No, they will make mistakes. Things right. will go wrong. We have to give that learning time. So that amount of being vulnerable to things going. So when you say, it's like, you know what, uh, I think the anti-fractal of, you know what, I trust you till you make a mistake. <laughs> Doesn't work that way. Right. I trust that you're giving your best. If you make a mistake, I will work along with you and let it. But my trust doesn't change. You made a mistake. That's it. Yes. Because you made a mistake doesn't mean you will lose trust. Right. Just give me some evidence that you are learning from it. That's all. I still trust that you are, your intention is not to make a mistake. Your intention is to do the best. So I've seen this classical mistake. I trusted him. He screwed up. So I'm not trusting him anymore. <laughs> So that vulnerability comes along with trust. So probably I think it's a good thing that you ask. I'd say the leadership has to be vulnerable to things going wrong mm -hmm. and also trust. Both needs to happen at the same point in time. Otherwise, we will start hearing, I trusted them for a week, they messed up, so I stopped trusting them. <laughs> right. So, so that means we have to we have to give opportunity for people to make mistakes and and still trust them, right? And 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 this is I believe has to come from top down rather than bottom up because Correct. this is not something the values of of any any company any organization have to start from the top. Correct. I think right? that in that way it's kind of pretty clear and simple. The leadership has to become more trust uh, vulnerable. And genuinely believe that the team can learn and will do it and work towards that. All right. So thank you, Kumaran. I think this was a very interesting topic and we will continue to revisit some of these, these, uh, these emotional ideas behind making companies successful and uh, in some, in our small way, try and influence how what happens in the Indian IT industry and uh, try to make them successful. So thank you all for listening. Uh, please do subscribe to our podcast. Uh, we are available on all kinds of platforms. So just go to etiunplugged.in and you will find out various ways to subscribe. And uh, see you next time. Thank you.